Your traditional setup that I like to use when I'm punching these mats looking for these big fish, you got to make sure you have the right equipment. Uh, big heavy rod, I'm using a Daiwa, this is an 8 foot heavy action rod. Uh, I'm using the New Zealand HD, it's got the big handles, I can find them quick when I set the hook. And uh, Daiwa Samurai Braid, I believe this is 70 pound that I'm using. It is a 70 pound test. And uh, First thing I'm going to do is you need a heavy weight, the vegetation is real thick. Uh, I already got one of my bobber stops on. I like to use two and uh, it just helps the weight stay there. Once that weight starts to fly away from the uh, from the top of the hook, your more tendencies to get hung up and not get your bait down to those fish. So two bobber stops, keeps, it up, keeps that big heavy weight on there with relative ease. Slide that on. Then my weight, we're using a one and a half ounce today rains tungsten I like rains you can see all the teeth marks all over it that's a good one they don't look good until they get some teeth marks on them slide that through and my favorite hook I've been experimenting with them I have no hook sponsors I like to use whatever hook is going to uh, get the job done best for that situation and in this case I'm using the VMC flipping hook this is a 4 aught. Um, a lot of guys like the 5 aught, but uh, for the most part I like to use beavers and crickets and stuff like that when it comes to my plastics and that full rot just seems to be the right size for me. And I'm going to use a snell knot. What I like about this is this is closed, the uh, eye of the hook's closed, the braid can't slip through. It's got a good keeper and it's a real sharp strong hook to handle this heavier equipment. Uh, I'm going to do a snell knot. The snell knot's real easy. You just slide it through and bring it down like so. loop it back and I like to do as many wraps as I possibly can to fill the shank of the hook between the keeper and the eye um, at least five but if I have the space for it I'll put in many more not many but seven eight seems to be a good number um, but definitely five is going to be that minimum Your snell knot should look when the weight touches it. Flips the hook up. It's just good. I, you know, I've experimented with this snell knot a lot. I don't like it when I'm fishing deep water, but when I'm fishing heavy matted cover, two to three foot, uh, I just have a better hookup ratio. And really, that's about the only time that I employ this technique, uh, and it works great. Before I put the bait on, one last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the line and take a marker and make it black. And the reason for this, in Minnesota I can get away with green line, there's so much vegetation, it's green water. Uh, down here the water's black, it's very tannic. It's clear, it, it isn't like it's, it's too dark, it's definitely clear, it ain't muddy water, but it's, it's got a lot of tannic and it's real black and that green line just sticks out like a sore thumb. And I'm a firm believer when you're looking for 10, 12, 13 pounders, that's just like a big buck out there. They, they pay attention to details, there's a reason why they got so big and I'm gonna not take any chance I can. So making sure that my line is black, that's important to me. And we don't need much. We're not fishing that deep of water. Then I'm using a, a Missile Baits D-Bomb. It's a great bait, gets bit by big ones got a lot of action the rib body helps disperse a lot of water and one thing you don't want to do I see a lot of people do and I made the mistake when I first started coming down here and fishing the stuff is trying to actually text pose the hook uh, that's not necessary it's gonna cost you way more frustration than it is any good that's a big bass so looking for you just kind of meat hook slide it through I'll take my marker and I'll go up about three four feet just to cover me and we're good to go time to go flip up some big ones 